Hi guys, today I'm going to tell you all about postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS. This is just a little follow up from my what is Ellis Danlos video that I posted last week. So I wanted to share a bit more about POTS with you because POTS is basically the reason that I got all of my diagnosis. I've been suffering with headaches and pain for an awfully long time but those symptoms were widely dismissed. Um, and it wasn't until I started having problems with tachycardia that I ended up on multiple A&E trips and feeling extremely, extremely unwell. I was nauseous all the time, I was dizzy all the time, and as I said, got these tachycardias that went up to goodness knows how high. It was really scary the couple of times the ambulance had to come out to my house at uni because my heart rate was so high and nothing was um, calming it down. So postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome is pretty hard to say and not that easy to remember. So I'm gonna break it down and explain in small chunks what it means. So postural is probably one of the easier words to explain. It basically means the position of the body. So when you go from lying to sitting to standing. <laughs> lying to sitting. Lying to sitting to standing. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> Orthostatic just means to be in an upright position. So some people completely miss the orthostatic part out and just call it postural tachycardia syndrome because the postural and the orthostatic kind of mean the same thing. Tachycardia simply means an increased heart rate. So for a POTS diagnosis, the difference between your resting heart rate and your standing heart rate has to be 30 beats per minute or over 120 within 10 minutes of standing. And the last bit, syndrome, simply means a collection of symptoms. So not only does your heart rate have to increase with the tachycardia, you have to have other symptoms relating to it, such as the dizziness and the nausea. It was yeah, the pre-syncope, possible fainting, loads of different things. POTS is diagnosed by doing what is called a tilt table test. You basically lie down on this flat bed table thing and they raise you up for up to 40 minutes to see how your heart rate and blood pressure and all those kind of things change. Because POTS affects the autonomic nervous system, it affects a lot more than just the heart. It's not a heart condition, it's an autonomic condition. So the autonomic nervous system controls your bladder, it controls your sweat, it controls your stress response, as well as the heart blood pressure systems. Some things that are really hard when you've got POTS are putting your hands above your head um, or keeping your arms up, so like washing your hair is really hard. Eating meals can be really difficult because the autonomic nervous system can also control digestion. So all the blood in your body goes to your stomach, meaning that there's no blood anywhere else. So you just start to feel really blur after eating. So you have to eat small meals really regularly. Heat intolerance is another real problem with POTS. It, um, again, that's why having a shower is really difficult, but last summer was awful. I just had to kind of lay out for a week or so. Infection can also make POTS even worse. So I've had times before when I've had like a little bit of a cold or a little bit of an infection or when I had a, a UTI and my POTS medication did not work at all. So obviously with POTS my heart rate is high, but my blood pressure also drops dramatically. Now you don't have to have a drop in blood pressure to have POTS, but, but it's often associated and mine does drop considerably. So I'm gonna show you now what they call a poor man's tilt table test, which means I'll take my blood pressure and heart rate now whilst I'm sat down resting, and then I'll stand up and take it at different increments to see what my blood pressure and heart rate is doing. Hopefully with my meds, it shouldn't be too bad, but we'll see. <laughs> okay, so I've just taken my blood pressure and my heart rate and sat down. It is about as average as you can get. <laughs> so it's 128 over 71 and my heart rate is 74. Now comes the tricky bit. So I'm going to stand up and see what happens. 
before I was on medication, I used to get awful symptoms of nausea and dizziness, uh, as well as blood pooling in my feet and all that kind of thing. I get a lot less of that now. I still get the pooling. Um, I still get the odd amount of dizziness as soon as I stand up. But for the most part, that's under control. But we'll see what the um, machine says about what my heart rate and blood pressure is doing. So my blood pressure has dropped a teeny tiny bit and my heart rate has jumped to 102. So my blood pressure has dropped and my heart rate has gone up just over 20 beats to 95. So it's 108 over 76 and my heart rate has gone up to 95. So it's only gone up 20 beats a minute, but that's on my beta blocker and my uh, blood pressure booster. But as you can tell, I'm still a bit out of breath and that's what it causes. Considering my heart rate used to go up like 50, 60 beats a minute when I'd go from sitting to standing. It's incredible <laughs> that um, it's only going up 20 or 30 beats. So as you can imagine, if my heart rate is in the hundreds when all I'm doing is standing, it makes it really difficult to exercise. Now I played badminton for my uni, so there was no way that I was an unfit person when this started happening to me. And it was a really, really scary time. And no one knew what to do with me because as soon as they took me in an ambulance to hospital and I'd lied down, it was all sorted out. It wasn't until I met the right doctor that knew what he was talking about that managed to give me the diagnosis. Living with POTS is really difficult because it's a completely invisible condition. People think you're unfit or that it's a problem with anxiety, not a physical problem that needs careful management. Doctors even took my tachycardic episodes off my records because they thought it was down to an anxiety attack rather than POTS. Obviously when I got this diagnosis everything started to make sense. POTS can also cause headaches so that added in with my headaches and many think that POTS is caused by the blood vessels being too stretchy meaning that they can't pump blood as effectively. This suggests that EDS is what causes POTS but I couldn't even get out of bed because my heart rate would go so high and I'd feel so awful I'd have to lie back down. The medications that I'm on have really given me my life back. I hope you liked this video and found it interesting. If you like my videos, please hit subscribe. See you soon for more videos about living with POTS and EDS. See you later.